What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and on this planet we send it and what we're going to be getting in today Well, I can tell you what we're going to be getting in this weekend as we're putting this tent away uh, But it, what we're going to be getting into in this video is I'm going to be installing the Grim off-road dual ARB Compressor mount because well to be honest. I just enjoy the onboard air. I enjoy the convenience of it And so I you know, I chose to go with the more expensive option I enjoy how it, the performance of the twin ARB you know, is on my LJ So I just kind of want to have the same thing here on my Mojave So in this video, we're going to be installing the twin ARB with the Grim off-road mount and the Jeep Mojave And you know, and I also say that this video is going to be a, have a little bit more detail So it's going to be a little bit longer because I am creating this video for those who will be wanting to do the same thing because when I was going in and installing this on the JT, there wasn't that many people out there installing it on a JT. So some of the things to where I might be having to deviate from, you might have to be deviating from it too. So I'm going to be showing sort of the step-by-step -step process to help anyone else along that might want to do the same thing. All right, I got a plan in place. Risks were acceptable. Let's go ahead and send it. So here's the dual ARB compressor. Um, I also just want to briefly highlight that in addition with the Grim Off-Road, I'm going to be trying to install the dot some Tino mat onto the Grim Off-Road hardware around the air compressor because I want to try to lessen the vibration here on the mount and then potentially also here on the heat shield. Um, to be honest, this is more future proofing than anything because right now I'll be using the air compressor from outside the vehicle so it's not going to be that much of a difference now. But again, like I said, I'm trying to future proof it because when I do anticipate potentially rerouting the hoses so that I can basically operate the air compressor from inside the Jeep, then I'm going to go ahead and again try to reduce the vibrations inside. But however, um, in addition to like the hoses, we got where the control area is. We'll be rerouting the intake for the compressor up here, along with the switches to be able to turn and off, off the compressor. Grim Off-Road provided this you know, cables that goes right with it. It's going to make connections a lot easier in addition to all the hardware that I should need, including the spacer bracket. So we should be good to go to go ahead and get started. And let me show you kind of where everything is going to be going and then we'll go ahead and send it So although I'm not looking forward to it I'm going to be having to pull this whole fender off here real fast to be able to get back there And uh, basically I'm going to be having to pull the clips off and I know the fender is designed to be basically be torn off If uh, you're off, you know wheeling really hard, but it's still it's not something that I'm looking forward to doing But we'll be installing the air compressor right behind the fender there and then the controls will be coming up here so um yep there ain't nothing to it but to do it at this point so let's go ahead and send it All right, so I removed the four bolts here, four fasteners, and just notice I didn't realize this originally, but one of them is smaller. I'm not sure where that came from, but if you're doing it, just make sure you pay attention to which one is going where, or at least just try to find where the short one's going. And then I removed the uh, Christmas tree clip here with the clip removal. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on over to removing the fender now. And the instructions say you gotta start at one edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and start on this end, and basically pull hard. And, and definitely, they, they give you like the uh, the clips in case you need to buy them, if you break too many or whatever, break any of them. If you wanna buy those and have those on hand, that might be worth it. But uh, yeah, definitely, it's always uh, fun when you're having to pull clips. So let's go ahead and just send it. When it's time to pull clips, it's time to take it serious. It's almost like you're going in for the hunt, going in for the kill. Because you're about to break something, and it's painful when you do it, but it's just something you gotta do. Maybe not necessarily to survive, but for this install, we gotta do it. so many. I think 
think I broke all of them. Video file showing me disconnecting the signal wire from the fender became corrupt but just know at this point that was the last thing that needed to be disconnected prior to removing the fender completely I broke just about every single clip <sighs> or at least that's what appears so I'm gonna go ahead and take a look here and see what we can do if I can salvage any of them but I need to go ahead and get some on order hopefully they got some nearby but I definitely recommend if you're gonna do this just have them on hand, and if you don't need them, then just go ahead and send them back. But uh, learn from my mistakes. We're going to go ahead and press on with the installation. I'll try to get to that after I get all this installed. But I'm going to go ahead and remove these clips. Hopefully this is a step that you don't have to do. But I'll be doing this using a long nose pliers, as you can see there, and just squeezing them all out for every one. So only three of the 11 survived. I broke eight of them. In addition to that, I also broke this. Let me show you where this goes real fast. When looking at everything, it's the guide that goes right here. So this is what I broke, unfortunately. All right, so the next step we need to do is we need to go ahead and uh, remove the steering sensor, remove the wire from this harness over here, take off this harness bracket, and then also uh, undo the bolt up here on the master cylinder. All right, got that out. That wasn't as intuitive as I thought it would have been. All right, next we're going to go ahead and cut out a little bit of Dynamat because the uh, step after I put this on is to install this spacer bracket here. So let's go ahead and cut a little out. All right, so I just went there to go ahead and take a look and see how the bracket went in there. Since the dyno mat was so thin, since I got the really high quality dyno mat, I just went ahead and did both sides. I don't think this is going to affect it any, but I may as well just double up if when I can, so I decided to. Next, we're going to go ahead and move on to installing the compressor bracket. All right, good morning. So it's actually the next day because yesterday I decided to go pick up the fender clips because I wasn't sure if the service parts was for Jeep was going to be open tonight or not. They were, but I decided just to go ahead and pick them up. So I went ahead and picked up 11. I picked up all clips for the fender. I decided I would just put all the brand new ones in there. So I think that was like 14, 15 bucks, but yeah, got that. And then I was like, all right, it's getting kind of dark. So I think I'll just not do any more recording. But then I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and dynamat the mount, you know? And then I was like, you know what? I may as well just mount on everything. And so, yep, a little bit later, I had basically mounted everything, put everything together and it's ready to for mounting. However, before we get to mounting, we need to go ahead and start getting some of the plumbing ready for installation so the next thing what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and uh, get the uh, get the 45s in here the 90 degree elbows in here and get them ready for the intakes and then the output I will say one thing that's pretty good about the Grim off-road kit here is they use ARB parts and I believe the hoses are even come from ARB too they're at least they're the same kind so that's pretty good that although it's a grim off-road product you know they're trying to keep it as true to ARB specifications so that's pretty cool so pretty much this is going to be very easy all right so what we're going to be taking is where we have threaded on one side and barbed on others that's going to come down here we're going to thread them into here and the hose is going to be barbed onto here and then where we have these two here we go where we have these two threaded cases we're going to have basically the one end going into the compressor and the other end going onto the steel braided hose. 
And then on the other end, we'll have the steel braided hose going into where the air chuck adapter will be. And then also at the other end of the rubber hoses, we'll then put in the barbed hose and then uh, lightly screw on the air filter intakes, the air intake filters. So I will say that although um, ARB, you know, is only 150 PSI, so I'm pretty sure that that falls all within low pressure. For the purpose of uh, this installation, since we're, the intakes is basically, let's just say, normal atmospheric pressure with a little bit of a... Uh, um, with a little bit of negative pressure to pull the air in. We're just going to go ahead and say normal pressure and high pressure or maybe even low pressure for the intake and high pressure since it's coming out of, um, since it has a limit of 150 PSI where the kill switch will shut this off at. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I don't need to show you guys, I'm sure you know how to go ahead and put on some Teflon tape. So I'm going to go ahead and put about three wraps of Teflon tapes around all the threaded area and then we'll go ahead and I'll screw it in and then we'll come back to you. All right, let's go ahead and send it. So slight change of plans. I want to kind of just show you the orientations of uh, which way the hoses should basically be facing once you're done. So got this point, if you can imagine this is the master cylinder and this is kind of going up the back of the uh, firewall. Um, this needs to be pointed somewhat up. And then we take this other one and then we're gonna go ahead and point this, should be pointed around the master cylinder. So. What I'm using it when it starts getting tight is a 15 millimeter to go ahead and uh, just finish the tighten. And since this is the low pressure side or the, you know, sort of the um, natural atmospheric side, um, it doesn't really have to be too tight. So, um, but I want to at least make sure it's pointed in the direction I want it to. So let's go ahead and point it on around. And that should be pretty good right there. All right, and then the next one we need to do is this one, the one for the high pressure side, um, to where again the max pressure, where it, the pressure stops at 150 psi, um, this is going to be the high pressure side. So we want to make sure that this is pointed up towards the air chuck. And we do want this to be pretty tight. So. I'm going to actually, it's probably be good there, but I'm going to go ahead and go around one more time. All right, that's about all I'm going to get out of it, so I'm not going to force it. This should be good enough in the right position. Now, before we go and start installing everything, we're going to go ahead and install the air filters. So they're going to be sitting in here like this. So we can go ahead and roll fast. Let me just show you here. Key thing is, is, again, these don't have to be tight. As a matter of fact, um, these filters are plastic, so definitely do not do it too tight. Um, I'm also being very gentle to make sure that I don't misthread it. All right, going on there pretty well. Um, I'm just going to go until I get a little snug. Yep, and it's actually, that, that's good enough for me. So this, hmm, I wonder if I can get that. I know I'm saying not to do it too much. I just don't, didn't want it to rattle, so I'm just gripping down here just a little bit. And in the end, this one should be pointing this way, and then the other one's going to be pointing around. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's good enough. Now we'll go ahead, and I'm going to have it go this way because this is the engine wall the engine compartment wall is going to be right here. So we want the hoses to be able to come from right here and around. And then the last thing to do to get this thing ready is to go ahead and get it ready for the air chuck. I'm actually I'm going to pause for a second because I need to go get me a, um, a larger, I guess, a crescent wrench for this size. I'll be right back. All right, we got the crescent wrench. So let's go ahead and put this in. When this is done, this should be pointing down. All right, I got that on there pretty tight. So as you can see, this moves around freely. It's not till we put this one on where it will actually lock into place by locking that down. But when I do lock it down, I'll definitely make sure that this is pointing down. And then the air chuck, um, which you'll see which one I use here in a little bit, uh, will be going in here. But I'm not going to be putting that in here quite yet. I'll explain why here in a second, but I got to alternate the plan because... Uh, Got to do a little audible just because what the schematics that they're showing from inside the engine compartment on what I'm supposed to be doing isn't matching up to what I got. So first, I'll, let me go ahead and free this up. All right, now that I got this free, I'll show you what we're about to do with this here in a sec. In the event you have to do what I'm doing, basically I'm taking this little fastener and I'm just 
pulling this out. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting my own zip tie through there to create my own. As you can see where they had one, I'm just going to follow the same thing. But let me show you where I'm going to be zipping this onto. Actually, before I do that, I need to go ahead and remove this. So let's go ahead and take this out too. All right, so you can see here we got the little nut fastener. I'm going to go ahead and just push this through. And now I'll be able to use this as my own. All right, hopefully you guys are able to see there. I'm basically going to be putting this onto there, wrapping this around. All right, we got mine on there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and connect it and then lock it up. Oops, helps if I put it on the right direction. <laughs> All right, there we go. Push the white clip in. All right, and the quick recap of the wire, and originally we took that nut fastener from there and we moved it up to there and I zip tied it uh, with my own zip tie. I took off this, I think, I'm not sure what kind of, whatever that thing is called, took it off from down here so that it could go ahead and just go straight across under the master cylinder and dropped right on down. So now that's up and out of the way and we're ready to move on to the next step, which will be mounting the compressor in this area. All right, so I'm not going to show you as I do every single turn on the wrench here, but basically I'm going to be connecting it to right here. So I want to, you can see it has this groove here on the firewall. That's what the spacer here is for. So I got my double-sided double sided spacer to go on there, and now I need to put on the compressor itself. Now what I'm told is the hardest part about this whole job is this right here, because I guess it's a super pain in the butt it's you know you're doing like quarter turns to get these two uh 10 millimeters on so once you get that on it's not too bad and then the 13 millimeter up top so the reviews definitely held true definitely was quarter turn at a time not difficult just a little tedious if i have any recommendation again hang from the top Go ahead and you know tighten on the bottom ones by finger by just a little bit and then once you got them on you feel like they're pretty secure then tighten that one all the way because it kind of lifts it up and makes it a little easier to access behind here and i don't know how well you can see it i'm gonna see if i can get the camera there even with the two layers of dyno mat the thin dyno mat i was able to go ahead and tighten it down so that the bolt that the nut is going on it was actually able to you know thread on down past the top of the bolt so just barely enough but i feel pretty confident it's going to hold so let me go ahead and show you how the bracket's going to go in here you can see it's going to be placed just right here how the so what i need to do is go ahead and pull this fastener down pull it out i mean and then uh arp's handed provided all the hardware and then this little washer is going to be going right there to make sure everything sits flush got a lint free Got a lint-free rag here. I'm just going ahead and washing this up real fast. Not too worried about it, but I do want to just, you know, while I'm here, I may as well go ahead and clean it up slightly. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and put the washer down. I'm going to go ahead and grab this bolt and put that one in first. There we go. I'm not sure what this is. It might be, actually, I think that's the uh, windshield wiper fluid hose that goes up to put windshield wiper fluid on the windshield. So, got that, move that out of the way temporarily. Let's go ahead and tighten this down. All right, we got that installed. Let's go ahead and install the uh, hoses and the different connections. So, I highly recommend you follow the instructions. They are pretty good instructions. I will say that I am deviating from them. If you follow them t t to the T, you're gonna, you're definitely gonna notice that I deviated. And the reason why I'm deviating is because these hoses, although they're cut to size, the reviews that I've seen says that to enable to get them so that they're, they're basically just a little too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. I'm gonna put the longer one that has the longer reach down here. So let me do that real fast. You don't need a pipe clamp since a hose clamp since this is low pressure basically atmospheric pressure and uh, maybe just a little bit of negative pressure than atmospheric um but uh the so th th these, that's why you don't need a hose clamp on these they, get, they do go on pretty snug though 
All right. Next, I'm going to go ahead and connect the power. All right, got that. I'm going to pull the slack out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use connect the switch harness provided by Grim Off Road. So let's go ahead and connect that. Where'd you go? There, we got that in there. All right, from what it looks like, everything under here is all connected. Let's go ahead and move to the top. Next, we're going to uh, route the power over to the battery. Not necessarily connected yet, but I haven't seen someone do this before, so I'm not sure if it's because it can't be done, um, which I'm assuming is the case because I would find it hard to believe that I'm the only one seen, trying attempting this. Um, but if this works, well, then at least those watching this will have a pretty good idea on how to route this so it's out of the way better than what's prescribed in the instructions and how other people have done it. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and uh, remove the radiator over, overflow. And this is just a 10 millimeter on these two right here. Temporarily move this out of the way. Now I want to go ahead and open this wire routing trough here real fast. So along here there's a few fasteners that I believe you just kind of... So that was a bit more tedious than I thought, but I left the wiring loom open. Good thing is I didn't break it. I'm going to go ahead and close it, but I kind of wanted to show you how it's routed there. You can see I also routed a six gauge wire. That's going to, because I'm going to be using that to a distribution inside the cabin on my next project for power for my two radios. But for now, you can see I got the terminals routed around here. Now I just need to go ahead and put the ends on and then go ahead and connect it to the battery when it's time. But the only thing is, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and come on over here. Everything's in place now. All I need to do is just go ahead and basically clip everything down. Probably make sure I got everything in line first. Oops, sorry about that. So just as suspected, as soon as I got all those things lined up, they pushed in no problem with the exception of the one here at the end. This one, I can't really get in there. I think it's just too tight right there where the uh, gap is for me to close down on it. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. I'll go ahead and let that stay open, no biggie. All right, we're getting down here to the end. I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and connect the rubber hoses next. First thing I want to do, though, is connect the steel braided hose just to make sure, because this is shortest, it has the least amount of play. So I want to make sure this gets into place before the other ones. So I'll go ahead and do this off camera when it's time to go ahead. I'll come back when it's time to go ahead and uh, connect the rubber hoses. And we are connected from there all the way up to the back side of here. And I got it tightened down pretty good. As good as I could go without going too crazy on it because this is going to be the high pressure side where we're going to be pumping up the tires. So I kind of want to give you guys an idea what we mean, what the other people meant when it comes to like too much, a little too much hose. Although they're cut to size and it definitely will work. It's just a little too much hose. So this is the shortest one. Um, and if I bring it here to the farthest one, you can see how much, that's very comfortable right there. And that's how much hose I got left. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my PVC cutters, go ahead and uh, cut to the appropriate size that I want, and then go ahead and plug them in. Just about there. All right, so making sure that you got ARB up, you should also see arrows up. We're gonna go black, red, purple. black, red, purple, and put it in. And again, I don't have anything plugged in right now I mean, as, as far as like power. So, all right, that's plugged in. Let me just, I'm gonna go in here and zip tie anything that I need to zip up real fast. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on over and connect the power. All right, I got her all wired up again, going through the built-in wire loom back there. Now you will notice that I don't have the air chuck quite yet. And that's because I want to try something other than the ARB. So I'm actually going to go pick up a universal one from Home Depot, but let's see if this works. All right, that at least works. So I can go ahead and put the fender on real fast. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll run to Home Depot in this vehicle and pick up the air chuck. And then we'll go ahead and finish up the installation. Now I got the fender clips and everything in there. I'll walk over there and show you this here in a second, but I'm just doing my last little check to make sure everything is up and out of the way. The wire, the original OEM wire, I believe that's the uh, oxygen sensor. No, it's not. I think it's the steering sensor is out of the way. So is the ARB stuff. 
And then you can see, in order for me to keep the switch wire out of the way, I just zip tied it to there. That was giving me it so I can keep it up off the uh, compressor mount, and then also kind of out of the way of everything else. And uh, yeah, everything else seems to be buttoned up. Let's go ahead and head on over. Let me just show you the uh, clips real fast. And here's the clips. And the only thing that I wanted to say, sort of a lesson learned real fast on the clips is, especially ones towards the like on towards the bends, you gotta make sure that they're pushed back all the way. They'll get maybe seated about halfway and feel like they don't wanna move anymore, but you gotta keep finessing them gently to get them all the way in. And then yet, yeah, once you get that done, it's just time to go ahead and put it onto the Jeep now. Okay, we got the chuck on here. We had two tests. Number one, as you can see, this is pretty i was maybe double the length as the arp one so it's you know the arp one's pretty compact and pretty tight so i've got two tests number one i want to make sure that this closes but first let's go ahead and while we're here let's see if it at least builds up pressure to the uh, safety cutoff switch of 150 psi and it reached it and there we go so that's a good test and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close this let's see here i'm going to try to do this with um, one hand, so please bear with me. So I'm just checking here to see if there was any marks. And it looks like it did not touch the liner even. So looks like we have enough space. Probably just barely, but hey, I'll take it. So now I can just use, this is a universal fitting uh, chuck that I picked up from Home Depot. So now I can put just about any air hose onto here and not be relying on anything that's uh, ARB specific. All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And I will say, you want to plan at least a good day to do the trip. Really, it's probably only going to take you about half a day. It took me about a day just because I didn't have all the parts on hand. So a couple, you know, lessons learned for me that uh, definitely have those clips on hand. And if you don't need them, then just go ahead and return them. Um, but it, and then I'll also say, being that I chose to route the wiring loom through that wiring trough built into the JT and the JL. That took a little bit of time. So give yourself at least a full day to do it, but it'll probably take you either just under or just over a day to knock it out. But I'll tell you what, I was already testing it out um, when I was out at the hammers last week and it is working better than I thought. As a matter of fact, um, like I said, I wanted to have the dual ARB, you know, being that it was be working so good with my LJ, but I'm definitely very impressed. A luxury item that I don't have on the LJ is the tire pressure monitor. That definitely makes it a lot easier, so I'm pretty happy with it so far. But as always, when I do these sort of reviews, I'll go ahead and about one year later, I'll go ahead and do a you know one year review and let you guys know how things are going. And if I have any problems prior to then, then I'll go ahead and immediately do a video. So if you don't see me doing a video between now now in about one year, then you know everything's going okay. As a matter of fact, if I'm running a little late on the review, you know everything's going okay. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.